So sure enough, meet the female black-headed python named Crispy. Look at how gorgeous this one is. I've been getting a few calls over the last few days about people that are really getting scammed on Facebook with my name. I don't want you to lose money because of these people scamming you. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. Winter has definitely arrived here in Michigan and tomorrow we're supposed to get like eight more inches of snow. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Let's go ahead and head into the reptarium. And one of the things I always say is that it is always summer here in the Reptarium. It's always in the 80 degrees, high humidity, and I absolutely love it. We have another busy day today. Like, what is different? I hope that together we'll have an amazing day. What do you say we do that? Before we get too far in today, I hope that the audio is going to be okay on this vlog because this is actually one of my old cameras. And what happens is like every four or five months, the plug right here actually goes bad and I start losing audio. So there was a couple clips from yesterday's vlog that didn't have audio. Audio, so I just took the mic off and I'm just using the external mic. Hopefully you guys don't mind. It just thinks that I have to go through three, four, five cameras every single year. I mean, these things are like a thousand bucks a piece and it's all because of some stupid audio jack. Regardless, let's go ahead and just put this aside. Hopefully the audio will work out. I was just admiring this really beautiful banana calcium. This is basically the same exact animal as Ben and Jerry. It's just a higher yellow animal. It's something that's called polymorphism. I've talked about this before where basically you just start breeding the highest yellow animal animals and every generation there's more and more yellow and eventually you get to something that's like 90% yellow. So today we actually have a birthday party but we're also open for the Reptarium so we're going to have to do a bunch of things to kind of get ready for it which is fine and I'll kind of take you guys along on the journey. Really it's a busy day in one sense but there's not a ton like yesterday we had four tours. It was absolutely gong show but I loved it. It was so much fun. Today is a little bit more laid back and then of course the Reptarium hopefully goes well today. We have some really cold temperatures this week. Literally one of our days it's like minus two is the high temperature. That's Fahrenheit, people. That is absolutely cold. So I'm a little bit stressed out that hopefully everything goes well here because this is the first time at the Reptarium that we've had these subarctic temperatures. So, you know, I'm kind of stressed out, but hopefully everything will work out and the animals will stay nice and warm. And with that big winter storm coming in, a lot of times that drop in barometric pressure can trigger breeding when it comes to snakes. You can see these guys are actually hooked up right now. And I'm just going through the ball pythons really quick. I'll check the spotted pythons and all the other pythons and boas as well but it looks like we already have a handful of successful locks which is really good again for whatever reason barometric pressure oftentimes triggers breeding Another hookup there, already we're up to like 10 or 12 hookups today. And the fact that we keep stuff on paper here, you can actually see these little blood trails right here. That's an example of usually something that would tell me that these guys probably were breeding. So although they're not hooked up now, there's a good chance they bred over the last 24 hours and I just missed it. All in all, it was a pretty good breeding day, but I suspect that tomorrow's gonna even be better when that storm rolls in. I'm not sure there's any way to really capture the beauty of this animal without seeing it in person, but oh my gosh, this thing is ridiculous. This is actually one of those coral motley snow corns and the pink in this animal is ridiculous oh my gosh and again the motley in the snow are all recessive mutation there's actually motley albino and anerythristic and then the coral part is actually a polygenic so again just like the banana calking it's bred for the pinkest snake year after year after year and oh my gosh some of these things are getting ridiculous you know nothing makes me happier than to be proven wrong about an animal and I'm gonna be totally honest with you I was pretty skeptical when we got Sweetie the Blood Python. I wasn't sure that this animal was ever going to be what I would call an animal ambassador and something that we could trust with people holding it. But honestly, almost every night someone wants to take out Sweetie and she is a puppy dog. So even though I always thought blood pythons were pretty cantankerous and I knew people that said, oh no, they're really tame. I was still like, I don't know that I could ever trust a blood python. But again, I was proven wrong. Sweetie is bulletproof. She is absolutely incredible. She doesn't seem to ever have a bad day or get into a bad mood and she has never shown any aggression towards anyone. So I am so, so happy that my kind of perception of blood pythons has changed tremendously because of this snake. Look at how absolutely gorgeous this ghost 
honey cypress looks. Ooh, doggy. I mean, it was beautiful when it hatched, but now that it's like 250, 300 grams, oh my gosh, that thing is stunning. You guys may or may not remember that I wanted to keep this albino piebald ball python right here. It's just a really low white female, probably only, you know, 10 or 15%, but I just love the pattern on that animal. I mean, this thing is so incredible, and I'm just going through some of our holdbacks and just kind of looking. I try to do this every now and then because after all, this is what I love. Because when I'm just so busy and I'm working, I sometimes have to stop, take a minute, and just look at animals because after all, that's what motivates me every day. You know, I talked earlier today how we're breeding children's and spotted and Stimson's python, and I think this is a dramatically underrated snake when it comes to a pet. This happens to be a children's python here, and basically they're all really similar. They're what they call Antaracea species and subspecies, and basically they're an amazing snake. And again, it's called a children's python. A lot of people think like, oh, it's a python for children. It was actually named after a scientist called Children Eye, so it's not like it was really a children's python, but Regardless, they are really placid, beautiful snakes. And this is like a three-year-old animal here. They can get a little bit bigger, but pretty much that's the size they are. The only downside to them, to be honest with you, is they're born pretty small. So if you're ever thinking about getting a children's or a spotted or a stimson's or an anthill python for that matter, just make sure you get one that's eating really well on frozen thawed pinkies. Once they get going, they are absolutely bulletproof and are wonderful, wonderful snakes. I don't think I've really ever updated you guys on the new black-headed python that we got a couple weeks back before I left for Italy. Of course, it's doing amazingly well. What a gorgeous, gorgeous snake. And there were a ton of really great name suggestions. And of course, the other ones we have are Snap, Crackle, and Pop. So everyone said we gotta name this one Crispy. So sure enough, meet the female black-headed python named Crispy. Another absolutely creative cake for the birthday party. And the way that things are kind of shaping up today is that Bruce and Jessica are gonna be here along with Kelsey here in about a half hour or so. But we're gonna go ahead and start the birthday party before they get here because obviously the kids are starting to arrive. So we have to kind of get ready for the Reptarium open and do the birthday party at the exact same time. I have to show you guys, Lori's got a new hairdo. <laughs> it looks so good. I'm so, I think it looks great. Are you happy? I'm happy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually feeling a little bit under the weather today, so she's struggling through. We have our birthday party to do, and I think we're going to cut you loose and have you just relax or something like that, but Thanks. I think your hair looks wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> I just have to show you guys. Just got done with the presentation for the birthday party. They're just sitting down for some pizza. And of course, this awesome cake over here went really well, really super well behaved kids. Uh, seem to be really excited about it. So uh, now we've got to get prepared for the open of the Reptarium. And of course, one of many things that we do, Andrea is cleaning all the glass here. So you're the perfect glass cleaner. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Andrea always comes in. She keeps things really tight on, not only during the open, but also during the week. Bruce, of course, is over here. He's uh. He's ready to start a rocking and rolling. Lots of poop today. So Lots of poop. poop today. That's, <laughs> my job. That's my job. One more thing: poop cleaning, water shedding, all the other stuff. I noticed the Woma shed too. So yep, yep. just a couple little things. But uh, cool. All right, I'll let yeah, you get no to worries. it. Like I've mentioned in the past, it's so important to really keep up on these cages every day, even when we're not open, because it's really simple for these cages over the course of weeks and months to start getting really grody. So if every single day we're cleaning every aspect of them, it keeps them nice and fresh for the whole time, not only when we're open to the public. The things I love when we're getting ready for the Reptarium to open is stuff like, you know, Elvis is just crawling around because of course we're servicing his cage. Kelsey's over here, got Joker, the scaleless rat snake, just hanging out. So it's kind of cool and everyone's just kind of working and getting things ready. You oftentimes see a ton of stuff out. Of course, Bella's out over here just hanging out right now. Bruce is over here spraying down Daisy. <laughs> So we are definitely, we're pretty close. I think we're about 15 minutes away from opening up and hopefully it'll be a great night. You know, the truth is guys, it's just awesome to live this life. I mean, to be able to share the kind of things that I love with kids and, and people that come into the Reptarium. So it's cool to have like the birthday parties. Of course, you know, I love the tours as well. And then tonight being able to be open to the public. I mean, it is really, truly living my dream. And like I've said so many other times, if it wasn't for you guys, I could have never fulfilled those dreams. So thank you because you're such a big part of this as well. For those of you guys that are following along on the breeding season, I thought I would do you a little bit of a breakdown because not everything is breeding you know even stuff down here in the dungeon isn't all breeding so of course blue tongue skinks now are in the breeding season right now and the same goes for my mangrove snakes as well as all of my crebo snakes all my carpet python woma pythons ball python spotted children stimpsons all those are currently in a breeding season now samboas are actually atypical seasonal breeders basically what that means is that we breed them when they have the right proper weight so we basically food cycle them when a female is really plump 
and ready to go. We start putting males in. Happens that about half our sand boas are breeding right now, and the other half are about three or four months away. Now, rainbow boas, whether it's Colombian or Brazilian rainbows, like this beautiful, leucistic rainbow boa, they don't breed until spring. Now, they're cooling down a little bit. We're continuing to feed them, but we won't put them together until probably March or sometime like that, and then they typically have babies like mid to late summer. So basically, my point is, is just because it's a boa or a python doesn't mean it all has the same breeding season. As a matter of fact, the most success you have with, say, a Colombian common boa constrictor is to breed them in about October, early November, whereas the majority of our other boas and pythons don't breed usually until December or January. So you got to know the species, do your research, and figure it out. But that's what we have breeding right now. Of course, all our clubbers are in hibernation. We'll be breeding some other stuff as it goes, too. So there it is. There's the update on the breeding season. As always, having a good time here at the Reptarium. It's a little more chill tonight than it was last night. We had a little bit of a rush when we first got going, but it's starting to chill out. Of course, it's, uh, it's sometimes it's better that way because you can have more time with people, but sometimes it's great to be busy. Looks like we got Night Fury out. He is looking okay. absolutely incredible over there. Doing all right, Bruce? Look like you got attacked by a monitor lizard. Oh, yeah, me and, Tell me and Elvis were wrestling around a little bit. We were playing around, <laughs> having some games. Yeah, he, uh, Bruce, Bruce likes to put him around his neck. That's what usually happens. Nice to see Lucistic Texas Rat get a little bit of love over here. Yeah. That's a cool animal. Isn't it beautiful? Everything going okay? Everything's going great. All right, good job, guys. There are so many things that are really awesome about the Reptarium, but one of the things that happens from time to time is people call us up and they just have an animal that they need to rehome or they just can't take care of anymore. In this case, it's a beautiful Brazilian rainbow boa that someone called and talked to Lori. She said that it was really aggressive. She was moving out of state and she was like, I just can't really take care of it. And she was really honest with us about it being kind of a cantankerous animal. So uh, I don't know what to expect. What do you say we open up and take a look? And here we go. Look at how gorgeous this one is. I mean, I love Brazilian rainbow boas, but in particular, this one is a real beauty. And I'm gonna be honest with you, so far it is acting completely fine. Now that doesn't mean that it wasn't kind of showing some defensiveness to the person that had it before. I certainly mean no disrespect in that sense. The truth is, times when you handle snakes with confidence, they're not nearly as apt to wanna to bite. This one doesn't show any signs of biting whatsoever. Again, we'll get it in a cage. It may change this kind of posture after that happens. And just so that you know what we'll do with this animal, we'll put it into like a quarantine rack, we'll treat it for mice just in case. I don't see any reason why I think it would have mice. I mean, it doesn't seem to have any signs of it or anything like that. But again, we always treat everything. We don't want that to happen in the collection. I mean, I'm proud to say, and I've said this a million times, we've been mite free for like four years now. I want to keep it that way. Regardless, this is an absolutely beautiful snake and I will keep you updated as it's going through its quarantine and hopefully in a month or so, we can uh, move this up to a raise up rack. Looks like we have a tortoise party going on. I wasn't invited to this tortoise party. I got to take a quick break because I have to address something that I want you guys to know. Now, I've been getting a few calls over the last few days about people that are really getting scammed on Facebook with my name. So basically what's happening is on my Brian Barczyk page on Facebook, which is a verified blue check page, when someone's making a comment, another Brian Barczyk page is then private messaging them, but it's not a blue check Brian Barczyk. And by the way, I don't have a private Facebook page. So if you are following our friends on a Brian Barczyk Facebook page, it is not me, unless it is the blue check. With that being said, they are then messaging people and trying to get them to send money, in particular like money gramming money to like Arizona or some other place. Do not do that. BHB will never solicit business from you. If you say, oh, I wish I could get a ball python, you will never hear from us saying, hey, we could sell you a ball python. We only respond to people that want to buy stuff. We don't go out and try to beg for people to buy from us. So please don't get caught up in the scam. I hate that I have to tell you guys this. By the way, I don't even have Messenger on Facebook on my other page, so you can't get a message from Brian Parcher because there's no possible way. So please, 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 the only way you do business with us is if you call BHB or you get an email from BHB, which would be bhbreptiles.com. Please don't get scammed. Please don't let people use my name and please spread the word so other people don't get scammed. I hate that I have to say this, but please make sure you're safe. I don't want you to lose money because of these people scamming you. So as we're about to close here at the Reptarium, I hope that the audio wasn't too bad in this because again, my mic was broke. Let me know in the comments if this worked out for you okay. I will try to get it replaced because I'm gonna have to buy a new camera, most likely. It stinks, but regardless, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog. Wish you guys an absolutely amazing day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching because you're surprised means the world to me and I truly truly love you guys so much can you do me a couple favors before we gather can you smash this like button if you like this video if you can turn on those post notifications so you know when I upload a video I really appreciate that make a comment let me know something awesome about you guys be kind to someone and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow